So there are many ways to skill in applications and I have this visual diagram to help you show or to help you, yeah, well to help you see how we could scale them, all right? I mean, that's why I have it here, right here, it's right here, yeah. So this is called the scale cube as I mentioned in the intro video, this is called the scale cube. Now. In this diagram, we have three ways of actually scaling our application, cloning, microservices, and partitioning. This skill cube was actually introduced in the book called The Art of Scalability. Uh, if you haven't uh, read it, I suggest you reading it if you want to get into architecture or back-end architecture. Uh, it's a pretty good book. Um, I'll have a link down below. but. It's a really good book about this stuff and this is where I got this from. And we're going to start it we're going to start looking at this diagram. So in the bottom left corner, it represents the least scaled application possible, a single instance monolith. Monolith, sorry, monolith. So right here, the mo monolithic system. Ooh, look at me. I think I pronounced that good too. Yeah, the monolithic system. Yeah, monolithic. Monolithic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this monolithic system or this, this area right here represents the least skilled application possible, a single instance. This means that you have one application running in a single instance on one single computer. As we scale our application, we move closer to the top right hand corner of the scale cube, which is the maximum scalability. Applications on this side of the diagram could represent multiple multi-instance applications that have been distributed into microservices and contain partitioned database clusters. Applications that are closer to the top right-hand corner of the cube should be able to handle massive amounts of traffic. The x-axis, which is right here, of the scale cube represents cloning. This means running multiple instances, uh, instances of an application and splitting the traffic between those instances. The closer we are to the left side of the axis, the fewer instances we have, okay? All the way to the left side, we might have a couple of instances running on single on a single machine. The more, the more we move to the right of this axis, the more instances we have, obviously. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, this one, but I mean the x-axis anyways, left and right. So the more to the right, more instances, left, less instances. So we can split our application up to up into many instances that run across many different machines, even across different data centers around the world. At a certain point, the data that our application stores will run out of disk space or and or memory, or maybe the database traffic will become too great to handle with a single database. The Z axis, which is this one right here, represents scaling the data capabilities of our application. On this axis, we'll split our database into several instances that are only responsible for a part of the whole data set. Data set. The dat data set. Along the Y axis, our microservices, we break monolithic applications up into microservices. This means dividing the application into services that are designed to focus on a single feature and work together with other services to compose the functionality of our entire application. So we're going to be looking at cloning services right now. An example for the X axis is let's say you have a, an advice business, you're giving out advice and there's too many customers coming at you at once, right? Well, the smart thing would be like, okay, let me, let me make two advice companies. So then there's now two, advice companies they're both exactly the same but the only difference is the traffic is being being split between those two now let's say it's too much traffic for those two well those two makes instances of themselves so now now there's four completely the same application but at least the traffic is being split into four um sets that's what cloning is we're cloning our application into instances there the instances are our applications and we're splitting the traffic into those instances so that way no don't no want instances is overworked or overloaded by traffic 
aka load balancer. So let's look at so let's look at an example about this. I already have one open to save us some time. These examples will be available in GitHub. Um, link down below in the description. But check it out. Right here, we're creating a HTTP server that's serving advice. Okay, on line four, right here. Those are the advice options. So this server is going to randomly give you one of these options. On line 12, you can see that exactly. This is where we actually create our server. Um, and on line 13, this is where we get our random advice, which is creating a random number um, that has a random number that's going to be zero through one, two, three, four, zero through four. And we're going to be creating a payload. So that way we could send it off to the port. Uh, we're going to be creating a payload with the port, with the process ID and the advice. Whatever the uh, random device we spit out, that's where we're going to be setting up or we're going to be giving out to the port. And on 21, this is where we're going to respond with that payload. As you can see up here on line two, this is where we get our port. It's either going to be passed in through our arguments inside of our terminal. I've done this in our first couple of videos on Node.js playlist or it's going to be on uh, port 3000. So let's actually start this application. Let me go in here and say node app. I'm going to say 301. I'm going to actually specify what port I want to put it on, which is 301. And we're going to be, it's on port 301. So let's go into our browser, go to localhost 301. And as you can see right now, we got our port, which is 3001, our process ID which is 10 740. I don't know if you can see that, but let me, let me, there you go. Our port ID and our device. I wouldn't. Okay. Now, every time I hit refresh, we could see that the advice changes. This is pretty good, but we only have one instance on this one process. So it's not going to be able to handle that much traffic. All right. So the solution to this would be actually forking this process. So let's actually go back in here and let's go into index.js. This is where we're going to actually create the uh, code to actually start cloning this application. So in this file, we want to get the fork function. So const const fork. We want to get the fork function from so require uh, we want to get it from the child processes method. Hold on, it's gonna child child processes. From the child process method and down below we're going to create an array called processes so const from processes is going to equal to an array and we are going to be forking our application so fork our application which is literally app and I'm gonna do this three times we're gonna be forking it three times right here with a just like so now if you recall we do need to send the port to the app to start it so the first one is going to be run on 3001 on one. Let me copy this. Copy that. The second one is going to be on 3002. And the third one is going to be 3003. And I'm just going to log out our process length. So forked 
dollar sign processes dot dot length processes control save that so now when I run the index file we will actually fork our app application we will clone it into three processes each running on its own port so let's go right ahead and do that let's go open up this our terminal get rid of this and we're gonna just do node dot this dot is literally going to look for the index.js and we're gonna just run that and we have an error cannot find oh it's underscore sorry about that underscore processes so let's try that again and as you can see we just forked three processes each running on their own set report so now if you go back in here we, we got actually 3001 refresh it we still grab it we'll grab this copy it now we could do 3002 and you see that it's working and we could do 3003 each with their own process ID so you see we created three instances each with their process ID 6760 for 303 9720 for 3002 and 6260 for 3001 6760 now remember these two are almost the same but they're not I'm just letting you know but <clears throat> we have forked our application three times now this is a very small example of how we could use a fork method available to us within the child process module there is another module that we can use to fork our application into a pool of processes so that's going to be on the next video but Thanks so much for watching this short series or short video, and I hope to see you in the next video.